Hello and welcome to my channel, The Way What Is Truth. Remember to like and subscribe and comment down below. Now, I decided to do this video because of a dream that I had this morning, okay? And uh, before I go any further, I'm going to read these passages out of the Bible in regards to spiritual warfare. Now, a lot of people in this world uh, can kind of sense that there's more to this life than just what we can see here taste, smell and touch, okay? There's more to this world than just the five physical senses. A lot of people are convinced that there's no such thing as the second heaven or the spirit realm, but I'm telling you now that there is, because I've experienced it personally, okay? Once when I was 10 years old, I experienced it for real, and it was terrifying, and at various other points in my life, I've experienced it. It's called life. You see, a lot of what happens in this world, uh, that, that we just call life, things going wrong, um, people uh, ruining our reputations, divorce, that kind of thing. It just goes on and on and on the amount of bad things that can happen to us. It's infinite the amount of bad things that can happen to people in this world. And a lot of the time it is spiritual warfare and we don't actually realise it, you see. <clears throat> because we are under spiritual attack. And you best believe that the moment you take an interest in Jesus or decide to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord, the enemy will attack from all different angles. So that's when we need to pray to God, rely on him and him alone, take it all to the cross, all of our problems, our doubts, our fears, our worries, everything that we have, lay it all at the cross. Okay, all of our imperfections, everything who we are, our sexualities, everything needs to go to the cross. He, he, he loves us, he'll take care of us, he knows what we need. He'll give us what we need. Not so much what we want all the time, but what we need. God knows what we need, okay? Satan will offer you what you want, what you desire, what looks pleasing to the, to, to the eyes, what, what, what sounds good to the ear, what feels good. But God will give you what you want, what you actually require to make you a better, more wholesome person in Christ. Anyway, um, without further ado, I'm going to read these Bible um uh, passages here in relation to spiritual warfare okay so ephesians 6 10 to 11 finally be strong in the lord and in his mighty power put on the full armor of god so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes okay now second thessalonians 3 verse 3 but the lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one all right now his words are true we're living in a world of spiritual warfare. There is a second heaven that lives next to our physical realm that we can't see most of the time, mind you. We can see it sometimes. Some people have been allowed to see it by God, actually. But anyway, it's always there, okay, whether we like it or not. So, yeah, so 2 Corinthians 4, 5. Sorry, 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4 to 5, sorry. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Okay. Now, 1 Peter 5, 8 to 9. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. Now, let me just read that first part out again. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. That describes his personality. He's hungry, Satan is, and he's angry. He's a criminal on the run, and he's only got so much time. So he's going to keep the unbelievers as, as unbelievers by distracting them with material things, money, the pride of life, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh. This world is full of atheism, it's full of agnosticism, full of people that believe the Bible is just a book of myths and fear tells just a fantasy. He wants to keep them like that. You know, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled is convincing the world that he does not exist because it makes his life incredibly easy. <laughs> okay. He doesn't just sneak around anymore, the devil. He's literally kicking doors down in people's lives because we let him without even realising it. Obviously, everyone's different, but uh, yeah, he will. He, he is kicking doors down. He is ruining our lives and he's taking us captive to sin without us even realising it. Anyway, James 4, 7. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The life of a Christian is not passive. 
This is a war we're living in. This is like proper military war, you know? You're either in it or you're out of it. Anyway, uh, Romans 8, 37 to 39. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's keep on remembering that. God has already won this war, but in between time there's, there's battles going on all around us, in our towns, cities, villages, tribes in our countries, in our own families, in our own personal lives. Some areas belong to the enemy, some areas are enemy territory in the spirit realm, otherwise known as the second heaven, and other areas belong to God. That's how it works, okay? Anyway, John 10.10. 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Colossians 1.13-14. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Okay. John 16.33 I, Jesus, have told you these things, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. The Lord Jesus Christ is a conqueror over the whole world and over all sin. And he's conquered the devil. All we have to do is hold on to him <clears throat> in this short life of ours. And that's it. Stay faithful and stay true to God. And always pray. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Okay, so I hope you've, I hope and pray you've enjoyed those Bible passages. Now, let me tell you about this dream that I had. I was standing on my driveway, just over there, and yeah, as I as I looked over the fence. I mean, obviously, if if I went out there now, I can see loads of houses, I can see lampposts, and it goes back quite far because I actually live on top of a hill. Okay, so I can see the um. The horizon, which in most places in Arnold Nottingham, you can't see the, the horizon because it's buildings everywhere and it's quite low down and everything. But here, I live on top of a hill. Anyway, in the dream, uh, I was seeing lots of wars going on in the background. It was all dark at night time and there was battles going on. I could hear, like, uh, a war happening, a real war. It was chaos, you know. And as I was looking over, I could hear, in, in the far distance, I could hear two demons screaming. It was like a deep, guttural roar. It didn't sound like a human scream. It didn't sound like an animal scream. There's a difference. Whenever I've heard demons scream, um, it's always sounded like something halfway between an animal and a human. No human could ever make that noise, I'm telling you. You know, it sounded much deeper and more powerful and much more sort of like... The only way I can describe it is that when humans try and scream or roar, like, 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 like we, we are limited by our vocal cords, okay? We're human. These eight, these fallen angels, demons, whoever they are, right? Well, whatever their names are, whatever their rank is, God knows them all, okay? And they can make much deeper, louder noises than us, okay? And it was scary. It, it, it was in the distance, but I could tell. And you want to know why they were doing that scream? It wasn't a scream of victory, it was a scream of suffering. They were suffering because I've been praying so much. I've prayed, I couldn't even begin to, to tell you how much I've prayed throughout the whole past, present and future of my life. But I do not limit God. When we pray as Christians, we should never limit him. Whatever prayers we've done throughout the whole, whatever prayers and interceding and supplications we've ever done, whatever conversations we've ever had with God, whatever's weighed on our hearts and minds, I simply pray this, Lord, take it all and keep on using it for this entire generation and every generation to come globally all around the world until your return amen and even after his return if those prayers are still applicable and still relevant let him carry on using them that's what i say and for the sake of all my friends and family for the sake of everyone who's ever entered into my mind and heart throughout the whole past present and future of my life i pray for 
whatever the whatever Satan has established and created in our lives, in our hearts, minds, families, workplaces, in our towns, villages, cities, tribes, all over the world, to be destroyed, to be torn down. For as much of what Satan has erected and has established in our lives, in our minds and hearts, to be torn down and to be laid waste and for God to take over with his Holy Spirit and his loyal faithful angels and for him to and for God to build up his strongholds in our lives instead. And I've also prayed for the enemy uh, to be immobilised throughout the whole world, throughout the whole past, present and future lives of everyone whom I've ever prayed for throughout the whole of my life, for the sake of their whole lives. You're starting to get a picture now. I, when I pray, I take it very seriously. And those screams I heard in that dream from those two demons, there were two of them, by the way, definitely two. And there was such... You know, I couldn't even begin to describe it, how disturbing it was. It was no ordinary dream that I had. And I could just see it was so lively. I could see, like, snowy mountains in the background on, on the horizon. And I could see... I could hear war going on. That's the only way I could describe it. It was a battle going on there. <clears throat> a battle. There was a war happening. And there's a war happening all around us. It, we're, we're, Wherever we live, in our own households, in our own homes, if we have parents who are unbelievers, for example, parents who are atheists or agnostic or whatever, they've got no beliefs or they don't know what to believe or whatever the case may be, perhaps they're Muslims or Buddhists or Hindus or whatever. Um, Satan is an expert in distracting people. He loves people to be distracted with, with whatever, money, pleasure, cars, our hobbies, our interests, our careers, our ambitions, friends and family, whatever. Just life. He uses anything and everything to distract people from God and from believing in, in the Bible. He loves it when people see the Bible as being a book of fantasy and myths and fairy tales. He wants people to believe the Bible is nonsense and that Christianity is just another religion, just like all the others. He uses the scandals of the Catholic Church, Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses to make people roll their eyes up wherever they think of Christians or the church. They think, oh, not, not, not them, you know, as if they were all cut from the same cloth. We're not. There's a difference between a true believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and someone who's a Mormon or a Jehovah's Witness or someone who's a, a fake Christian. Uh, there's so many Christians, unfortunately, now who are attending these huge mega churches. Many of them exist in the United States of America and they preach about worldly success and worldly prosperity instead of the true gospel of Christ. And that's something else to pray about as well. The amount of times I've prayed for all the fake churches, all the churches that I've let God down, as well as all of the genuine, sincere churches who are struggling to stay open because there's not enough people attending, and so on and so forth. There's so much we have to pray about. I've prayed about all the false who've been imprisoned, all the people who are in prison under false charges for the evidence to come forward to set them free. And whenever I pray about anything, no matter what it is, whether it's animal cruelty, uh... Uh, domestic violence, whatever it may be in this world, I've prayed so often for all the atheists and, and, and the agnostics to turn to God, okay? I've prayed for all sorts of things. I couldn't even begin to tell you how much I've prayed about. And I always pray it in, in the context of who, 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 whatever I'm praying about and whoever I'm praying for, I say, Lord, for as long as it pleases you, take whatever prayers that you can use and make use of and keep on using the prayers that I've already done, that I'm doing now, that I'm going to do in the future, throughout the entire whole past, present and future lives of any individual or any country or any one I pray for. I usually pray for this entire generation globally and every generation to come until God's return. And that literally means everybody, everyone who's alive now and everyone who's going to be born and to be alive until his return. I do not mess about when it comes to prayer and neither should you. You see, one of the biggest mistakes we make is that we limit God's power when it comes to prayer. He can take our prayers and use them with whomever he wants, whenever he wants, okay? Uh, that goes for all your friends and family who you're praying for. Never underestimate the power of prayer. God is incredibly powerful, okay? Don't let Satan walk all over you. Look, look, right, Satan is not hiding behind every tree or, or hiding under every rock. We need to keep our heads screwed on straight as Christians. A lot of what's going on in this world that people think is just a life. We switch on the news, we see people killing each other, bombing each other, we see wars going on in, in, in the Middle East, 
but a lot of it is spiritual warfare in conjunction with what human beings are doing. It's a two-way thing. Whatever goes on in this physical realm is also happening in the spirit realm. There's a connection between the two. And most people don't see that connection between the two, you see. Some people can sense it. They kind of know there's more to life than just what they can see, taste, hear, smell and touch. But it's scary a lot of the time. So if you're one of these people that kind of know that there's a spirit realm and a second heaven, but you're scared, or perhaps you're just not sure about it, perhaps you want more wisdom and you don't understand it properly, or perhaps you just think, oh, I've got enough going on in my own life in this physical world that I'm living in, never mind what's going on with the spirit realm. Life is stressful, life is tough. So it's a little wonder that we can feel so overwhelmed sometimes. And a lot of people feel very jaded, very cynical, and they think, oh, you know, um, say sera, sera, what, 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 what will be, will be, you know. Sometimes it can feel like life is futile, life gets too much. People feel like they're damned if they do, damned if they don't, you know. <laughs> but we shouldn't have that attitude. We should always pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for us to give us wisdom and protection and guidance. He's there, willing and able to protect all of us from Satan. And yeah, as you get in your car and drive down the street, as you walk through your neighbourhood, there's a war going on. You can't see it most of the time. Some people have seen things. I certainly saw something terrifying when I was 10 years of age. Definitely check out that video called uh, I, Experi uh, I, I Had a Demonic Experience at the Age of 10, I think the video is called. It's not very old. It's, it's, it's easy to find. <clears throat> and that's when I was 10 years of age. That's how I know that demons exist, because I experienced it firsthand, and my mum walked into the living room, and she was scared too. So she did the sign of the cross, and it's only when she did that on the wall that that hand shadow that was on the wall disappeared. That's how I know demons exist. It doesn't matter what any atheist tells me. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what, what people say. We need to ignore the atheists. Pray for them. Love them. Forgive them. Tolerate them. No one's perfect. No one's better than anyone else. We're all sinners, right? Um, you know, so we just need to keep our heads screwed on straight as Christians and realise that there's a war going on, but not to lose our heads in the midst of all this because some people aren't very good at coping with it, especially those who've got mental health problems or they've got a depression and so on and so forth. These people and us, myself, you, whoever's watching this video, we all need to trust in God. There's a war happening out there. You best believe it, okay? And we have great authority in Jesus' name, okay? And what, what we should be doing is praying for the Lord God Almighty to take back as much of the ground that has been lost to the enemy as possible throughout the whole past, present and future lives of this entire generation globally and every generation to come until God's return. To take back the ground that's been lost to Satan and for him to immobilise the demonic forces in as many people's lives as possible worldwide and for him to take over with his Holy Spirit and his loyal, faithful angels into that person's life, to, to, to set them on the straight and narrow, to protect them from Satan and to save them. We're talking about people's souls on the line here, yeah? So I hope and pray that you're all well. Uh, I'm just thinking what else I can add to this video before I end it. But yeah, spiritual warfare is one of those things that's real. I've experienced it from the age of 10 years old, uh, for, for, from the age of 10. I, look, man, I mean, that just happened. Whether you believe me or not, I saw a hand shadow on the wall and it was as fast as anything go, going like that all over the place, so fast I could hardly see. I, I could hardly see how fast it was moving, okay? I just got home from school. Aged t I was a 10-year-old kid. I didn't know anything about spiritual warfare. I didn't know anything about demons or fallen angels. What, 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 what are you kidding? I didn't know anything about that, you know? <laughs> I didn't know anything about it. Yeah, I had a simplistic belief in a higher power like so many children do. Many children uh, believe in a higher power, but they don't understand the ins and outs of it. I still don't. I'm 35 years old. I'll be 36 on the 30th of April. I still don't understand it all. I understand very little, actually. We walk by faith, not by sight. Let's never forget this as Christians, okay? And, yeah, there's something else I wanted to say. Is that... One of the reasons why so many people are unbelievers, now God has pointed this out to me, it's not so much because they're evil, wicked people who hate him all the time, although there are a lot of people like that out there, obviously, but one of the most common reasons that we sometimes overlook as to why so, so it, it, what, what, why the majority of people don't believe in Jesus Christ, their personal Lord and Saviour, it's something so simple, you might just laugh at it. 
It's because we weren't brought up to be Christians, to be believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. From, 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 you see, unless someone is brought up from a child and is familiar with the Bible from a child and goes to church, a proper good church, a genuine, sincere church which sticks to the gospel as it's supposed to be, uh, you know, from a young age, unless the parents bring them up to be a Christian, then chances are that child will grow up to be crooked. And you know what happens to a tree when it goes up crooked? It's very, very difficult to straighten up when that, when that child is fully grown. Okay? And that's what's happening all over the world. We're living in a secular, atheistic world, a world that has drifted away from God. They'll believe in anything. They'll believe in the scientific theory of evolution, the first self-replicating molecule, the Big Bang, anything and everything except for God being the creator of all things, okay? And uh, we're living in a world of falsity. There are churches out there and people who teach that the earth is only six or 10,000 years old. Nowhere is it written in the Bible that the earth is only that age, okay? But that doesn't mean to say that the theory, that, 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 that the theory of evolution is true either. Just because the theory of evolution, just because macro evolution is false, doesn't mean that, you know, that the earth is only a few thousand years old. There's so many misconceptions now about the Bible. From, from the start of Genesis all the way through to Revelation, it's so grossly misunderstood, the Bible is, and took out of context. It's unreal. Everything from the Old Testament, Genesis, the Old Testament is took out of context. People read it and think, oh, God's a homicidal maniac. No, he's not. <laughs> he's just reacting to sin and rebellion. It's because of our sinful pride that we don't see the true state of mankind. And, and we take things out of context anyway. But that's just how it is. And uh, anyway, I hope and pray that you're all well and just keep praying for mankind because you best believe that the majority of this world doesn't want to know God. The majority of this world and all the human beings on this earth right now, the majority of them don't want to know about the Bible or, or about religion. They want to just carry on living their lives however they want to, to, to live them. They don't want to be held accountable to God. We are living in a truth is a relative culture. You know, uh, people would rather listen to the wisdom of this world, what they hear on the radio, what they see on TV or the news. They'd rather read The Origin of the Species, written by Charles Darwin or whatever. Uh, they'd rather read anything but the Bible. They don't want to know. It's because we're creatures of sinful pride. So let's pray for all the pride, all the ignorance and all the false knowledge, wisdom and understanding and everything that sets itself up against God to be torn down. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Because it's all happening out there. Atheism, agnosticism, people have become more cynical than ever before. You know, in, in, in the United Kingdom where I'm living, Islam is growing much faster than Christianity. And there are more churches worldwide shutting than opening. So let's just reflect on all these things and never underestimate the power of prayer. And just be mindful that we are living in a world of spiritual warfare. From the day I was born to the day I die, we're living in a war, okay? So I, I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God does not give us a spirit of fear or confusion, but of a sound mind and of power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? So bye-bye and take care.